What's up YouTube? We are back in the Senado Square area, the heart of Macau, this time in front of St. Dominic's Church. This church was built in 1587, so I'm sure it's got to be one of the oldest churches in Macau. One of the things that's interesting about this church is that it was built by three Dominican priests who had actually traveled from Acapulco, Mexico to Macau and then subsequently built this church that you see behind me. So. I've got something very interesting for you today. I have some new information that I want to share with everyone that when I read it, it just kind of blew my mind and it'll give new meaning. If you come to the ruins of St. Paul and look at it, you'll understand a little bit more what you're looking at. I think it's fascinating. Come with me. I want to show you. Now, one of the things you have to remember is that the Portuguese arrived in Macau in 1557. This church didn't start getting built until 1602. Now, the reason you only see the facade on the ruins of St. Paul is because it was destroyed in a fire in 1835, along with the adjoining uh, college that was connected to it. One of the things that's really interesting about the ruins of St. Paul is that it's divided into five sections. You can see there are four horizontal lines going uh, across on the face of the church. The first level contains the insignia of the Jesuits priest that built the church, along with their, with their wording, Matter Day, which means Mother of God, right above the entrance. The second level that you see, there contains four bronze statues. Those are four Jesuit saints. The following level above the Jesuit priest contains the Virgin Mary. Now this is where things get really interesting because not only do you have the Virgin Mary right in the center of the church, you also have some really interesting symbols such as the demon over on the far left, the Portuguese merchant ship just to the right of that, and over on the right side of the church, the Virgin Mary is trampling a seven-headed hydra. Now, I don't know enough about why there's a seven-headed hydra. I just think that it's really, really interesting. And then further, further to the right, there is a skeleton. This level, the third level, is by far the most interesting. One of the other things that is unique about this and sort of combines this East and West world together is that the third level contains these lions that are jutting out from the side of the facade of the ruins of St. Paul. That's fairly unique for a Catholic church, but given the fact that we're in Macau and that it was part of China, it makes sense that these lions are placed out here to protect the ruins of St. Paul. You can see them right under the pentacles. It's a really interesting sight. They just sort of stick out of the side of the building. Now, once you go to the next level above the Virgin Mary, you get to Jesus as a child. Now, this is really interesting too, because it's really easy to just gloss past that and look at it. But if you look surrounding Jesus, there are various elements that, according to what I read, are the tools of the passion. So you're gonna get the crown of thorns, you're gonna get the spear, and you're gonna get some other uh, symbolism surrounding Jesus, which, I, which is, is, is fairly fascinating how much information is being transmitted given the fact that they built this church starting in 1602. Now, once you get to the final level, so the sort of pinnacle of the ruins of St. Paul, 
you're gonna see the dove. Now the dove obviously symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And it makes sense that it's, it's at the top of the, uh, of the ruins of St. Paul in a pyramid style shape. So I just, I guess I, the reason I find this so fascinating is because I've been here, never have I taken the time to really understand the different symbols that were on the face of the ruins of St. Paul. Someone took the time 400 years ago to carve all these elements into the face. And I just, I think there's something really fascinating about that. Let me take you inside and then I have a surprise for everyone that I think most people miss when they come to the ruins of St. Paul. But I'm gonna take you with me because I think it's fairly unique. Now, we're actually on the inside of what would be the St. Paul's Church, right? As you can see from the back end how they reinforced it to protect it. Because don't forget, we get a lot of typhoons here in Macau, actually several a year. There is a museum downstairs, so don't forget that if you do come here. Let's just go see if there's anything that might interest you guys. Now, I'm not 100% sure of the meaning of this. I believe this is a crypt, as most Catholic churches will have some space within them for the allowal of the burial of saints or something similar to that. Oh, I see. You can see here. Definitely a crypt. Okay, so from what I'm seeing here, the hall houses various Catholic works of art dating back from the 16th through the 20th century, including some items that are connected to the history of the St. Paul's ruins. Now, another one of the things that I believe is often missed is over here on the side of the church. In fact, I hadn't seen this in the six years and the almost dozens of times I had come here. Here, is the original stone foundation that was laid out with the engraving that says, to the great Virgin Mother, dedicated with great joy by the city of Macau, year 1602. I mean, if you're gonna come here, you wanna see the original foundation of this. It's just unbelievable. YouTube. Now, I promised you a surprise here at the end. Now, a lot of people miss it because they just come to the ruins of St. Paul, they take a quick look, and they go back. But here, we are at the Temple of Na Cha, which is a really, really important temple because it's a deity that helped Macau recover from a disease several hundred years ago. And I mean, I think it's fitting for this time. Now, one of the things that's really interesting is that it's placed behind the ruins of St. Paul, so it's really easy to miss but it's this very unique temple. And another thing is that it's placed right next to the city walls. This is an original part of the city wall of Macau that separated, probably separated the Chinese side from the Portuguese side back in the day because Macau has gone through several iterations of how it's been broken up and organized in the past. So, I mean, I think it's just one of those things that this wall was built before the 1600s so people would have walked through this wall and they would have seen the Nacha Temple, they would have seen the ruins of St. Paul, and likely they would have looked out and seen the ocean. So, I mean, I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's such a unique part of Macau and Macau history. And a lot of people, they come here, they gloss over the ruins of St. Paul, they take a picture and they go home. So if you come here now, you know a lot more than the average person that's coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys. Bye-bye.